Here we are asked to write down a tree adjoining grammar that accepts the following string language. There are several points to notice. One is we are asked that the grammar accepts the string language. The point is a tree adjoining grammar is a tree language. That means the trees are actually part of the language. Not like in context-free grammars where the trees just show the derivation step and can change as long as the string language is the same. But in this case, the trees are part of the language. Another point is um, a context-free grammar can count up to two. That means you can have two things with the same amount. And the tree adjoining grammar can count up to four. That means you can have four things of the same amount. And the uh, tree adjoining grammar for the string language. Well, I got it by trial and error, so I just show you. I start with an initial tree just like this. The start, um, the start non-terminal, the start node with um, the start symbol with an empty leaf. And then we need an auxiliary tree that looks like this. We have a root S node with A and D and another dot S where we have B and C and another dot which is the footnote. The footnote, sorry. And now we are, we shouldn't join here, so I write here null, uh, not no, and a for null adjoin. So we are not allowed to do adjoins here, we are only allowed to do them here. And now how does this, how does this tree adjoining grammar um, generate this string language? I just show you. Well, uh, let's just say in the derivation process, we start with this tree. Then we are adjoining this, the auxiliary tree, into the S node. Then we get something that looks like this. A, D, S, B, C. That's all of this tree in the S node, where we are not allowed to adjoin because it's a footnote. And below this tree, there hangs what was in this tree before. And now, when we're doing another step, I will just use some different colors for that. Let's just take that for um, that color for that tree. If we are doing the adjoining one more time in this node, because we are we are still not allowed to adjoin in that node. If we are doing an adjunction into this node again, we will get something like this. First, um, the upper part of this tree, like this. Then we will adjoin into that node. That means it will be replaced by that tree here we have D and A and the S node B and C and another S node and here we will we have things hanging down from that tree, we were cutting this through, we, are, we were adjoining here, so this node was replaced by all of this. And now what hangs below this node now hangs below that node. And then I have to scroll with the Epsilon. And we are still not allowed to join here. And we could just do another junction into this no that node. And as you can see here, because we can just, um, let's say, it put, include this tree 
put it into the other tree, we get the effect that we are adjoining, that we are generating the string language by adding A's, B's, C and D's, well, let's say in the middle. And as you can see here, the string language now is um, what we want to have. It, here we have A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D. And it's exactly the language we want to have.